Did you enjoy the 2020 NBA draft? Oh, the laughter, the tears, the heartache, the suits. Now everybody wants to know, did my team actually draft the best player they could have at their spot? Well, I'm here to break it all down for you today. Going to go through all 30 teams. I'm going to list out who each team drafted and give you my overall grade on how they did. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. My name is Troy. I do NBA videos like this all the time. So if that's your thing, make sure you leave a like on this video. It helps me out a ton, and it tells YouTube to recommend this content to other people. And also, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I've got fresh NBA videos several times a week. I'm going to go through all 30 teams, and we'll start alphabetically with the Atlanta Hawks. They drafted Onyeka Okongwu and Skylar Mays. My question here, where does Okongwu play in this rotation? Because you've got John Collins, you've got Clint Capella. There are rumors that they want to sign Danilo Gallinari in free agency. I kind of think Tyrese Halliburton would have been a better pick for them and what they're trying to do with this team. Skylar Mays, I'm not really sure if he's NBA material. I see him as a two-way guy, maybe a 15th man. The grade for the Atlanta Hawks is a C-. minus. The Boston Celtics picked Aaron Neesmith with the last pick in the lottery. Then, toward the end of the first round, they picked Peyton Pritchard. Then, in the second round, they picked Yam Mater. Neesmith is a great shooter, but they already have that huge logjam at the shooting guard spot. I wonder where he's going to play. I think maybe one of the big guys in the draft would have been a better choice for the Celtics. Peyton Pritchard, I think, was taken a little bit too high. I had him on my board in the 30s or 40s. Can he play backup point guard next year behind Kemba? That's the question. Modder has potential, but he'll stay overseas for at least a year or two more. The grade for the Boston Celtics is a C. The Brooklyn Nets only ended up with one pick in the draft. They selected Reggie Perry at 57. He's a big guy, and it's a position of need for Brooklyn, but they still had Paul Reed on the board. You had Killian Tilly. Reggie Perry, to me, is a two-way player. I don't see him as NBA material. The grade for the Brooklyn Nets is an F. The Charlotte Hornets picked LaMelo Ball with the third pick. They picked Vernon Carey Jr. early in the second round. They picked Nick Richards in the 40s, and they picked Grant Riller toward the end of the second round. LaMelo Ball was a no-brainer at the number three pick. He's a player to build around, and he fits with Devontae Graham or Terry Rozier. I think Vernon Carey is going to be really solid, too. I like him as a big man in this league. Nick Richards and Grant Riller are two ways, especially for right now. Grant Riller, though, does have some potential. I could see him leading the G League in scoring as early as next season. The grade for the Charlotte Hornets is an A-. minus. The Chicago Bulls, surprisingly to me, picked Patrick Williams at number four, then they picked foreign big man Marco Samanovic in the 40s. I think Patrick Williams at number four is way too high for him. I could see him in the mid to late lottery, but he hasn't shown me enough for me to believe that he's worth that number four pick. He could be Kawhi Leonard, sure, but he could also be Stanley Johnson. That's a huge risk to take so high in the lottery when there's other spots you need to fill on that Chicago Bulls team. Samanovic is a big center who I don't see coming into the NBA anytime soon. He'll stay overseas. More than likely, his draft rights end up being traded a few years down the road. The grade for the Chicago Bulls is a D+. The Cleveland Cavaliers selected Isaac Okoro, one-and-done freshman from Auburn. He plays a position of need for the Cavaliers. He's going to help build that defensive identity, and I think he's going to get minutes from day one. The question for Okoro, can he become a passable shooter in this league? If so, this is a home run pick. The grade for the Cleveland Cavaliers is a B+. The Dallas Mavericks picked Josh Green in the late teens. They picked Tyrell Terry with the first pick of the second round, and a few picks later, they selected Tyler Bay. These are three players who fit in with Luka Doncic and this Dallas team. Josh Green is a big-time athlete. Tyrell Terry is a huge steal and an awesome shooter. Tyler Bay is a workhorse, great rebounder, and a glue guy that teams need. The grade for the Dallas Mavericks is an A-. 
the Denver Nuggets picked Zeke Najee and RJ Hampton in the 20s. I have my questions about Najee and his ability to play right now. Is he a modern center? I'm really not sure. RJ is still a year or two away from being a contributor at the NBA level. He'll spend a lot of his time in the G League. So all in all, I really don't think the Nuggets did too much to help their roster for next year. The grade for the Denver Nuggets is a C. The Detroit Pistons selected Killian Hayes in the lottery, Isaiah Stewart, Sadiq Bey in the teens, and Saban Lee in the second round. I love the Killian Hayes pick. The Pistons need a point guard. Isaiah Stewart, I think, was picked a little too high, but give him a year or two and he's going to be really good. I especially like his fit with Blake Griffin and Christian Wood spacing the floor with him in Detroit. Sadiq Bey is awesome value at number 19. Those Villanova guys always impress in the NBA. I don't quite understand the Saban Lee pick. I think there were better point guard options still on the board. The grade for the Detroit Pistons is a B plus. The Golden State Warriors selected James Wiseman with the number two pick, and in the second round, they picked Nico Mannion and Justinian Jessup. What a name. Wiseman was the no-brainer pick for the Warriors at number two with Edwards off the board. I think Nico is awesome value in the late 40s. Remember, he was a lotto pick before the season started. Justinian Jessup is a nice guy to stash overseas. Maybe he becomes something down the road. The grade for the Golden State Warriors is an A. The Houston Rockets ended up with one pick in the second round for this year's draft. They picked Kenyon Martin Jr. He'll be signed as a roster spot or a two-way deal. He's a raw and athletic player. I'm interested to see what happens when he goes against grown men, though. The grade for the Houston Rockets is a C. The Indiana Pacers only had one pick in the second round as well. They picked Kasha Stanley in the 50s. They did a nice job with this pick. Stanley is a nice athlete. He has that Duke pedigree. He tries on defense, and he's a good character guy they can have on their team. The grade for the Indiana Pacers is an A. The Los Angeles Clippers selected Daniel Oturu and Jay Scrub, both in the second round. Oturu could be a solid backup center for the Clippers. He's also a really good rebounder. I think Jay Scrub has some potential. He could be a two-way player for them, or he could make their final roster, come in as a spark plug off the bench. He was actually getting late first round buzz by some teams. The grade for the LA Clippers is a B plus. The Los Angeles Lakers didn't have any picks in this draft. They originally had the 28th pick, but that was traded in the Dennis Schroeder deal. So for the Lakers, they get no grade. The Memphis Grizzlies selected Desmond Bain with the last pick of the first round and Xavier Tillman in the early second round. This is the second year in a row that the Grizzlies had an outstanding draft. Desmond Bain is a steal at pick number 30. He could be the two guard of the future for the Grizzlies and is going to be getting lots of open looks with John Morant on the floor alongside him. Xavier Tillman is a guy who can complement Jaron Jackson Jr.'s lack of rebounding. They're also former teammates from Michigan State. I see Tillman as an enforcer type player like Charles Oakley was in the 80s and 90s. The grade for the Memphis Grizzlies is an A+. The Miami Heat selected Precious Achua in the 20s. He can back up Bam Adebayo. He can guard four or five positions on the floor. He's a rim runner, he's a hard worker, and he fits with the Heat culture. The grade for the Miami Heat is an A+. The Milwaukee Bucks had two picks in the second round. They selected Jordan Wara and Sam Merrill with the final pick of the draft. Milwaukee needs shooters to put around Giannis, and these guys are two of the best in the draft. I think they might actually make the squad as regular rotation players and not two-way guys. The grade for the Milwaukee Bucks is an A. The Minnesota Timberwolves had three picks in the draft. They selected Anthony Edwards first overall and Leandro Balmaro and Jaden McDaniels in the 20s. I'm not sure how Edwards fits on this team. They did try to trade the pick, but they didn't have any luck. Defense will be an issue for the Timberwolves. Balmaro could be the next Manu Ginobili, but he's going to be overseas for at least another year. Jaden McDaniels is your typical boom or bust pick. I think it's good value in the late 20s, but he has a lot of work to do on his game. The grade for the Minnesota Timberwolves is a B-. 
the New Orleans Pelicans selected Kyra Lewis Jr. with the 13th pick. He's a speedy guard. He can maybe be a piece of that backcourt along with Lonzo. It is a really crowded backcourt though, so the Pelicans will have to figure out what they're doing there. Maybe a big man would have been better for their needs. The grade for the New Orleans Pelicans is a B. The New York Knicks selected Obi Toppin, aka Ob Top, aka Obi Wan Top Nobi, and Emmanuel Quickly, aka Manny Quick. Ob Top was a no brainer at the number eight pick. I think the New York fans will love him and what he brings to the game. He's working on his defense, which is the main knock on him right now. I don't quite understand the Emmanuel Quickly pick. I do think that Tibbs is going to like his defense. He can also shoot it, but is he too small for the NBA? Maybe he's more of a second rounder. The grade for the New York Knicks is a B-. The Oklahoma City Thunder selected Alexei Pokoshevsky, and in the second round, they picked Theo Maladon and Vit Kreischke. Poku could be the next Durant, he could be the next Nikola Jokic, but we're not going to know for several years down the road because he is a project who is going to need some time in the G League and will have to get some NBA reps in. But Oklahoma City has lots of picks, they can afford to take a couple risks. Maladon could be a nice backup point guard one day, add him to that crowded backcourt though. Kreischke makes no sense to me. He's a big point guard, but I don't see him in the NBA. Not sure what they were doing with that pick. The grade for the Oklahoma City Thunder is a C. The Orlando Magic had one pick. Number 15 was Cole Anthony. I love this pick. He and Markel Fultz could be the future backcourt for this team. He adds in shot making and he adds in some toughness. The grade for the Orlando Magic is an A. The Philadelphia 76ers selected Tyrese Maxey in the first round. Then in the second round, they picked Isaiah Joe and Paul Reed. Tyrese Maxey is a shot maker who can also be a bulldog on defense. Isaiah Joe can shoot it from deep. The Sixers really need that. Paul Reed is a huge steal this late in the draft. He can play with or back up Embiid. He could be a big part of Philly's rotation. The grade for the Philadelphia 76ers is an A. The Phoenix Suns selected Jalen Smith at number 10, and I do not understand this move. I see Smith as more of a center and not a four, and he's going to have to play a lot of four because DeAndre Ayton has that center spot locked up. I think Devin Vassell would have been a better pick here. Maybe Jalen Smith can be a rim runner for Chris Paul, but I'm not quite sure what Phoenix was thinking. The grade for the Phoenix Suns is a D. The Portland Trailblazers had one pick. In the 40s, they selected C.J. Ellaby. I don't see him as an NBA player. There were better options on the board at the guard spot. I see Ellaby as a two-way guy. The grade for the Portland Trailblazers is a D. The Sacramento Kings selected Tyrese Halliburton, Robert Woodard, and Jamius Ramsey. Halliburton was a no-brainer when he dropped all the way to the 12th pick. I love the backcourt of him and De'Aaron Fox. I think Sacramento's next order of business will be to ship out Buddy Heald for picks and assets. Robert Woodard is a raw player, but he has loads of potential. Good pick at number 40. Ramsey is one of those irrational confidence kind of guys who could be a spark plug off the bench for you potentially one day. The grade for the Sacramento Kings is an A. The San Antonio Spurs selected Devin Vassell and Trey Jones. I think Tyrese Halliburton would have been a better Spurs pick, but I love the defensive potential of Devin Vassell. I think he could be in the rookie of the year running with San Antonio. Trey Jones is a great pick in the 40s and is going to be a solid backup point guard. The grade for the San Antonio Spurs is a B. The Toronto Raptors selected Malachi Flynn and Jalen Harris. The Raptors need a point guard because Kyle Lowry is on the last year of his deal and Fred Van Vliet is a free agent. We don't know what's going to happen with him. Flynn did a great job in college at San Diego State. I think he'll do well in the NBA. I don't really care for the Jalen Harris pick, but, you know, it's 59. Put him on a two-way. Put him in the Raptors 905. See what you got with him. The grade for the Toronto Raptors is a B+. The Utah Jazz selected Udoka Azabuki and Elijah Hughes. The question I have here, is Hughes actually better than Azabuki? Is their second rounder better than their first rounder? Azabuki means you don't lose size when Rudy Gobert sits. He also takes up a lot of space near the hoop, and he's good for the playoffs. 
but I wonder if there were better big man options still on the board. Elijah Hughes can come off the bench, he can hustle, he can change the tempo of a game. Might end up being a solid player. The grade for the Utah Jazz is a C. Finally, the Washington Wizards selected Denny of Dia and Cassius Winston. Denny is a big playmaker who can be in there with John Wall and Brad Beal. Small forward is also a position of need for the Wizards. He's a solid glue guy. Cassius Winston isn't the most athletic player, but he can run the point, and he'll give you solid minutes, good value in the early 50s. The grade for the Washington Wizards is a B. Guys, that's what I think, but let me know what you think in the comments. Are you happy with who your team drafted? Who did you want them to pick? And what do you think of these grades? And what grade would you give your team? If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you leave a like and also subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thanks so much for watching. This is Troy with the Half Court Report, and I'll see you next time.